Three programs we're giving away today. All three. Ready? Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. This is the RGB bundle. These are the core foundational workout programs, and we're going to give all three of them away to one of you viewers. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get all three workout programs. By the way, follow them in that order. Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, Maps Aesthetic. It's nine months of exercise program. You'll get great, great results. Also, we're running a 50% off sale on two programs. There's four days left for it. So Maps Performance is 50% off. Maps Aesthetic is 50% off. Performance is athletic type training. Aesthetic is bodybuilder style training. Here's how you can get the 50% off. For Maps Performance, go to mapsgreen.com. And then for Maps Aesthetic, go to mapsblack.com. The code for both for 50% off is FEB50. So you can get use that code, get 50 off performance or 50% uh, off aesthetic, or get 50% off both. Works on both. Once again, it's FEB50. Okay, here comes the show. Eating a lot of protein could be killing your bulk. All right, let's talk about bulking. And a lot of protein. Just refuses to say gains. I know. Well, you know why? It's specifically about it's specific about bulking because you, you know it's funny. So I got uh, where did I do this? You kill your was, gains too. No, it, in bulking. Yeah, I was. Yeah. No, so here's here's why. I was talking to somebody the other day. I think it was on a. Oh no, here's what it was. I was on um, the NCI group last night with the the trainers and coaches. <laughs> And there was a young lady on there that was talking about having a client that was a hard gainer. It was a female client, really skinny, who feels really full eating anything over 1,200 calories. Yeah. And she's like, what do I do? It's going to be re it's really hard for her to eat more than 1,200 calories. She's super full and she's got a super fast uh, or based on her appetite, her metabolism is faster than what she's eating. We can't gain her, get her to gain any muscle. And I said, well, how much, what's her protein intake like? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, we're, we're aiming for a gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I said, that might be the problem. Yeah, she's eating all protein pretty and much. And from now. natural <laughs> sources too. Yeah. yeah. And so here's the issue with bulking is that, yes, a high protein diet does help with muscle gains. It's also the most satiating macronutrient. Protein will kill your appetite faster than carbs or, or, or fats, much faster. So if you're eating a high calorie diet and you're, you have a fast metabolism, you're trying to put on size, and you're eating a lot of protein can make it very, very challenging. Now, the interesting thing is studies show that high protein or really high protein is more important on a cut than it is on a bulk, right? So when you're bulking, as long as you're eating like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight and your calories are above surplus, you're doing fine. It's when you're cutting that you want the higher protein because it preserves muscle and it, of course, helps with appetite. But I remember this with myself as a kid trying to eat more mm -hmm. food if I ate too much protein, it would kill my appetite. I'd get, I couldn't well, eat It becomes more. a chore really fast. <clears throat> and that's where it, I think supplement companies, you know, uh, really like peered into that and tried to make it so you'd get as many calories as possible and make it, um, you, you know, try, try to make it a, a palatable so you could consume like, uh, you know, 1,100 calories in one sitting. Uh, but man, you'd pay the price uh, as you're digesting it. Well, I really think there's, there's a fine line here because. I also went through the phase where I was eating plenty of calories, but I wasn't getting in a bulk. Yeah, but I wasn't getting enough protein. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so there, you're right. There's, I'm, I'm not saying low protein. <clears throat> right, right. So it, it is like this, and I, it, that's why it, it's not that simple, right? Like I think sometimes uh, the fitness space oversimplifies it. Like, oh, you just got to get your protein, and and I remember when we first started the podcast, we would go back and forth on this because it's like I'm really careful about that message because I know that a majority of my clients didn't get enough protein. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm talking to a, a hardcore fitness person who knows protein is like this, you know, magical macronutrient that helps you build muscle, they overconsume. And sometimes they overconsume so much that it fucks digestion and then they have a hard time bulking or putting on muscle. So yeah. there really is like this sweet spot that you want to be at. And I, I feel like a lot of people tend to be on the extremes. Either they don't, they they grossly under eat it, so that's mm -hmm. why they're not building any muscle, or they eat so much of it, chasing it, thinking that it's the the magical macronutrient, and then their digestion is kind of fucked up, and then they can't, or they just have, their appetite just doesn't allow them, <clears throat> right? Like like because they're the, so satiated. Yeah, and the example of this young woman that we were talking about, I think she was, I think she said she was like 109 pounds, and I said, you know, if she eats 75 grams of protein, that would be plenty for her body weight, and mm. then she could eat the rest of the calories in more palatable carbohydrates and fats because mm -hmm. 
those don't hammer your your appetite nearly as much. I mean, this is even for the case with me when I'm trying to gain. You know, I weigh right now. I'm, I'm maybe closer to two fifteen. 215 grams of protein for me, if it's from food in particular, because yeah. I can add shakes and shakes don't do this as much. But if I eat 215 grams of protein in food, my appetite is is shot. Yeah. Now, it is really hard. Yeah. So I, I know we've given the advice in terms of like uh, trying to cut down where we start with protein. Would you reverse that in this situation where you're trying to like go carbs, you know, and then fat and then protein oh, in terms of like the order of it? Yeah. I, it depends on the person. If, if it's a, one of those situations <clears throat> where you're, and you know what, I think it's important to paint the context that I'm talking about people who are challenged with eating enough calories to be in a surplus. Yeah, that's who we're talking about. Right yeah, now. so if it's easy, if you're if a surplus is easy for you, then maybe don't, this is not that big of a deal. But if you're somebody who's like, man, I can't eat enough, and it's really hard for me to eat all the calories that I, I need to in order to gain any additional muscle, um, in that particular case, I would say, okay, so long as we're getting, you know, about, like I said, 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. After that, go for the more easily digestible, palatable macronutrients, carbohydrates, and even fats, right? Fats and carbohydrates, especially when you combine them with, with, you know, salt or a little bit of sweetness are very palatable. Protein is just, it's an, and we know it's for fact, it's a fact. It will bring down your appetite. I mean, you eat a bunch of chicken, <clears throat> uh, especially lean chicken or lean protein. And you're just like, I, I, I can't eat anymore. Well, no. I also think this is, here's an example, right? Of where, and something that we don't advocate for, but where it sometimes makes sense is eating nice processed foods and foods that are super palatable, more palatable. Yeah. Just because it's, I mean, I did that when I was yeah. trying to hit my cal, when my calories had to be like 4,000 plus, it was just, it That's was hard, man. Yeah. It was impossible to do it with all whole foods. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could do yeah, that once in a while, but consistently <clears throat> to maintain that, that muscle mass that I mean I had to pile on but the thing that I did was I, I just I made it a rule that okay I'm gonna get like all of my my protein intake that I need through whole foods and natural sources and then I'll pile the calories on after that like so it was like okay I still was eating yeah. a, a bulk of my nutrition was coming from clean quote-unquote foods and then it was like, okay, I just had this dinner, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be really tough for me to have another, like, and I, and I hit, let's say I hit all my protein, what I need to, as far as hitting my protein targets, but I'm like short a thousand calories. Be really hard for me to have a, a double or a triple serving of the dinner I just had, mm -hmm. but I definitely could sit down and have some ice cream. Yeah. Or I could definitely get had sit down and have like magic spoon cereal. I could definitely do something that was super palatable like that or processed that would help me do it. And I know we don't for health, it's not the ideal thing for you to do. But for someone who's really struggling with putting weight on or bulking, that was a strategy that I found I had to do in order to break through that, yeah. that struggle. Yeah, for me, it's mm -hmm. like, um, <clears throat> you know, all as long as I hit um, right now 150 to 170 grams of protein through food, uh, then I'll eat the rest in more palatable, you know, macros. I'll, you know, like I'll have you know potatoes and I'll even fry the potatoes sometimes. White rice is good, but I'll add butter to the rice, which makes it more palatable and salt. Um, and then at the end of the day, for me, it's easier to add a shake for the protein. Because if I have a lot of protein from whole natural foods, my appetite's it's done. I just can't eat anymore. It totally so that, that's me. what I'll do if I'm still chasing protein. But what would happen sometimes is, you know, when I was, again, back to the 4,000, yeah. 5,000 calorie days, I'd hit my 220 grams of protein, you know, at like, say, 3,000 calorie mark. But then I knew I needed another thousand calories. Now you're throwing the other uh, stuff yeah. on. Yeah, that's where I would slap on the ice cream or do yeah. something like that to keep my calories. You know, I remember high. I had a client just like this, and it was somebody who, and it was a woman who just, I don't know if you guys, and this is not super common, right? It's nine out of 10 times, it's the opposite. It's somebody who has an issue with eating too much. But every once in a while, you get a challenge where you have somebody who's, and they're, they're being very sincere. It's like, I just don't, I can't eat anymore. Like, I feel like I'm stuffed and, and, I, you know, I'm just not hungry. And I remember I had a client like this and I kept pushing the protein and she's like, Sal, after I eat, you know, the chicken breast and stuff that you tell me, I can't eat anymore. And then I said, you know, what? let's try cutting your protein down a little bit and seeing if we can get more calories by doing that. And it totally worked. Mm -hmm. She was able to eat more food as a result and then gain, you know, uh, some muscle. And, and again, the studies show this, that the upper limit for most people for gains from protein is around... 0 0.6, 0 0.7 grams per pound of body weight if you're relatively lean. More than that, and you really don't get any additional uh, benefit. Now, the additional benefit you may get from eating more than that is really good when you're cutting 
because there seems to be a muscle preserving effect when your calories are low and also the appetite suppressant effect that you get from protein. That's really handy yeah. when you're trying to cut. But when you're doing the other side of that, oh, that can make it really and what's, hard. And what's the the theory or the, the the science behind that? Is that be when you're low calorie? I mean, th- your calories what is what gets converted over into sugar and energy and fuel. Yeah. Because you're low calorie, you have minimal amount of that. So then the body starts looking for other resources. I'm assuming that's why a higher protein diet in a in a calorie deficit is more advantageous than a higher uh, higher protein diet in a bulk. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say this very carefully because. I know. Context I mean, matters. You're going to get somebody who's going to get all. But yeah. I mean, for the general population to get an understanding, like yeah. that's kind of how I would try and explain Yeah. It. And, and really, protein, <clears throat> and again, I'm going to be careful with this because context uh, matters quite a bit. And it's not as cut and dry as it's going to sound right now. But protein has an anabolic effect. High protein has a pro muscle building effect. So it's like you're sending a build muscle <clears throat> signal while you're also cutting calories. And cutting calories generally is a get rid of uh, muscle signal. Catabolic. It's catabolic, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. your body's always trying to balance the energy. And a great way for it to do it is reduce muscle because muscle is expensive. It burns a lot of calories. So eating high protein in that particular state tends to preserve more muscle. Now, the reason why I'm careful with this is because people will hear this and be like, oh, cool, the more protein, the better, and I'm going to build more muscle if I right. just eat a ton of protein. It's not that simple. But yeah, when you're cutting, you have a muscle-preserving <laughs> effect when you do that. And when you're in a bulk... You don't need as many grams of protein to build muscle. It's just because you're already in a surplus, it's not nearly as important. High protein is important. <clears throat> just you know, the super high protein intake doesn't really make that big well, of a difference. Well, just simply being in a calorie surplus, that we now switch from being you know you're in a deficit, you're in a catabolic state. When yeah. you're in a surplus, you're in an anabolic yes. state. So just simply being in a surplus, you're already pro building or pro adding, right? Totally. And so. I, that makes sense, right? And when you're low like that, your body's looking for other resources for fuel. And yeah, so it it's interesting help. to me too, but just even in, on the training side of it, like how people don't really um, attribute or, or think about the muscle preserving uh, strategies in terms of like when you're on a cut, like the, all they want to do is like cut down. And so they're trying to like reduce calories and then get high intensity, you know, movement, almost cardiovascular based type of uh, exercises uh, instead of like focusing more on actual uh, you know, strength training uh, to 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 provide that signal that you know we still need the muscle. Oh, there. dude, the, the key to the key, the key to cutting, hundred percent, is muscle preservation. That's the key. Focus all your energy on muscle preservation while you're in a deficit, and you are more likely to end up leaner. Uh, you know, from a body fat perspective. But do you guys see that message very often in this space? No, I me- don't. Like the, ever. No, the message is very much like the scale. How yeah. much weight you lost, how much size you lost, are you smaller, that type of deal. Muscle preservation is the most important thing whenever you're trying to get lean. Right. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to, especially this. You, That's all your work you're losing. Right? Yeah, and regardless if you're, uh, I don't care if your goal is to look sculpted or not, you don't want to end up at the end of a weight loss journey with a significantly slower metabolism. Good luck maintaining that, right? So you're eating 2,500 calories a day and you're overweight. You lost 30 pounds, now you're eating 1,200 calories a day. And that's what you got to eat to maintain. That's a big difference, and that's forever. Mm-hmm. That's a tough position to be in. That's usually why we see. You know, <clears throat> you know what was down. really tough for me, and I don't think I've shared this on the show before, was after using all those strategies to to push calories for as long as I did during the competitive years, was now that I'm like my metabolism is so different than yeah. what it was then, is breaking uh, behaviors. Eating behaviors, oh. like I had to train. I train an, an example of what, that's a, that's a tough one. Like an example of an extreme one, right? I, I I got to a point where for at least four or five years there, that if I ordered like a Five Guys, it was always two double double burgers and whatever else on the side, right? And you know when I'm slamming four or five thousand calories, you know that's only like sixteen hundred calories. It's just a fraction of my my day or yeah. whatever. It's that. actually helping you hit your yeah. Time it, it, it would it would be high protein, and so I would I would need it for the day. Where and because I got so used to doing that, that if you know now like oh Katrina and I we just ordered five guys the other day, and 
you know, it's the, my natural thing is that, or two of those, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like more like 3000 calories a day right now, but you know, for the longest time I would still do that. I would still go back and still order that and then way over consume, but think I need to eat that much. It took me a while to get out of that, that mindset of, I don't need that much anymore. And just one of those will satisfy me. It'll yeah. give me my caloric intake I need, but I trained myself so hard on always pushing the calories for such a consistent period period of time that you you get these habits of you know certain dishes that you eat yeah. or like that and the the serving size that you would do it totally. in totally like, and, and the reverse is true right yeah like uh right now right I've, I've been trying to bulk it's been really hard now my metabolism's way faster than it's been in a long time especially ever since starting uh trt so i've gained some muscle metabolism's really fast my gut health has always been the limiting factor or should i say for the last maybe eight to ten years it's been a limiting factor and there's been some stuff that I've done uh, over the last year or so. My gut health seems to be really good. So I'm pushing calories, and it's really weird and really hard because my eating habits were the way they were yeah. for so long where you know I, I didn't eat all the time. I didn't have to worry about eating all the time. That's just my, It was better for my gut health, and that's what it was, my yeah. metabolism. Now it's like, holy cow, man. I got to really – my goal was let's see if I can go from 210 to you know 220 or so, gain 10 pounds. And I'm sitting at 215 right now, and there's no way. There's no way I'm going to be able to. No way. I don't want to. It's way too much food. You know what happened last? You know what's been happening? I'm snoring now. Oh, yeah. I'm snoring at night now. Yeah, yeah. On my side. I'll yeah. sleep on my side. <clears throat> last night, I wake up in the middle of the night. My wife's not in bed. I'm like, where'd she go? She went in my daughter's room to go to well, sleep. Well, remember, we, I was snoring we, we used to get shit all the time on the podcast because you would hear me me breathing back in the early yeah. days when we first started the podcast. Like that was like yeah. one of the, the we get criticized for that all the time because I'd be. Like, I remember when we had was it who do we have here? Jordan Shallow. Oh, Shallow. Yeah, yeah, you to throw roll him under the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a heavy breather. Shallow yeah. is like that. You're just sitting. Just He's a sitting big there. guy though. <sighs> yeah, I feel like everybody has a different threshold too. Like I don't think my body is like getting over two ten for me is really hard. Right. Some. Some people over 210, no problem. And they feel comfortable. For me, I'm like forcing that my body, I don't think it's that good. Oh, uh, watching, I mean, watching you right now so reminds me of, you know, show years, like because the, the way you have to eat to just to maintain your size right now. It's silly. It's a like an, it's like having a whole nother job on top of the. It's expensive. It's silly. It takes up a lot of time. Yeah. And it you looks know, cool though. It's fun for a second, dude. I, it's, yeah, but you never show it off. So, yeah. come on, guy. I had a, no. I got. A, a I don't want you use that for marketing reasons. So I you had, make some money, man. Dude, I had a pump yeah. today that was. I, I, give I the have, fans what they want. This hasn't happened to me in years. <laughs> give, give the fans what they Shut want, your dude. Face. <laughs> Stupid. No, listen. You I had start a, a hashtag. I, yeah, I yeah. had a pump today where I, I wash my clothes on you. I, I couldn't change my shirt. Remember that? I haven't that in years. Yeah. Where you get such a pump yeah, that yeah. you're like trying to do your shirt and you can't do it. But you know what I've been doing that's helped a lot is at the end of the day, I add protein if I need it. Yeah. Um, and the only one that I can do that doesn't really make me feel like, oh my God, I, I'm so stuffed is the bone broth the protein. The bone broth one. Yeah, from paleo. Mm -hmm. I can throw, I can have, you know, 60 grams serving of protein with that and it's like water. It's, it's super smooth. Easy. Yeah. It's just because there's nothing in it. It's just, there's Courtney no flavor, the there's time. no color. Oh, so it's, you use it too. So I, yeah. I haven't used it. I'm so terrible, right? No. I mean, yeah, I haven't tried you, but I know you both get a little more upset with the way. Although I, I do notice things when I've had, I've told you before, yeah. I had multiple things a day of whey, but I haven't been, I haven't messed with that yet. Dude, you say I it's could, like water. It doesn't taste like a no, no, no. Bone? You no, no, no. You taste it. Okay. But you taste like bone broth. There's oh, no okay. bone broth. There's no smooth. flavor. Yeah. There's no nothing in it. It's literally just. Have you thought? Has, have you thought of making it like in like a soup or a stew or something like that? You would just you like, can. It's like something yeah. you would use like a normal. We broth. tried that with like a, a chicken soup. Oh, you guys. Broth. So yeah, I'm wondering yeah. if you have you tried. Something I haven't. Like, I just you know. It was mix all it. right. It, yeah, it wasn't was bad. it good? Yeah. No, I just mix it with water. But I could have a, a, literally a 60 gram shake, drink it, and 10 minutes later, it's like I drink water. Wow. Versus if I do other proteins. 40 grams is where I'm at. If I go like 60, it doesn't matter what the well, source don't is. You, do you pour it in your uh, rice, right? Like, oh, if I do, do that, if I like do, yeah, if I make it into, kind of thing? if I make it into hot, you know, uh -huh. like broth, yeah, then you can use that instead of I've done water. that before, but not with the Paleo Valley protein powder. I did that back when we were working with uh, Kettle and Fire. Yeah, 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 that yeah. would make the, the protein rice that you talk yeah. about. That I really liked. Yeah. I thought it actually tasted yeah. really good. Like oh, that. dude, speaking of, uh, sh you know, showing off or whatever. So I, yesterday was the, for me, was the uh, <laughs> day in the life, right? Yeah. So I'm posting stuff, and usually if I'm doing a workout, I'll, I'll do like a flexing pick or whatever, put it up yeah. there, you know, for my ego. Anyway, so I did an ab <laughs> shot, right? And this yeah. is, I've done this now a few oh, times yeah. where I'll flex, the, you know, the abs or whatever. 
literally, what percentage of lewd DMs do you think come from men versus men, women? All men. Why? Well, like, what's the ratio? I've been men. saying this since day one. What I used to say was like four dicks to one, one, one boot set of boobs well, or something the, like that. It's guys like guys are just more one. likely to throw it out there. You yeah, know? like it's just in in, in our nature. Nah, it's ten to zero. There's no there's no, 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 no girls. Ten to zero. It's dudes. <laughs> And they'll say shit, and it's the same guys. They'll say some shit like, ooh, hot, ugh, hot. Like, I don't even respond to you, bro. I don't, so, okay, so the I girl, get why women the girls, are so good. The girls don't do yeah. that. They, they, uh, they're, they're just- They're a little more subtle about yeah, it. Yeah, they're more yeah. subtle. That's what I was looking for, right? They're just, like, guys are like, hey- I like you. Yeah. Or I want to. I want to put it in your butt. Or yeah. they're, yeah. just like, wow. they're like direct. Like she's like whoa, bro. Like wait, 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 wait. Where a girl will say, dinner first. Right? Yeah, yeah well, like, dude, the girl will say something like some she'll steps. she'll compliment like something like oh your hair looks really nice. Yeah. 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 Oh that lighting really compliments yeah, yeah. you. you Nothing know? to do, do like, with your shirt. No, dude, off. dudes are bad, dude. And it's like you know whenever yeah. if that, whenever that happens, I know like I I, I could tell I could feel for women right. I would devour those clothes off you. Well, guys say shit. Like yeah, that, dude, I say fucking. I don't even want to. I don't even say half the shit. Like that, I, I get seeing some of these DMs, and I don't say nothing. I, I go back. I'm like, every time you say something terrible to me, I never respond to you. You keep going. Uh, yeah. You persistent pig. No, it's funny because <laughs> when I was when I was younger, I, I remember I would hear like like you know girls or women talk like complain about guys catcalling them, and I remember thinking like, yeah, what are you complaining about? Like if I was walking on the street and girls were like catcalling me, I would think it's awesome. Yeah, and then I remember I had a um, I had a female employee. She was she was talking about coming to work and some dude was saying something to her and I said that back to her and she said it's different and I'm like what do you mean she goes do you feel threatened by the girls I'm like no I, she says yeah because they can't do shit to you if you don't right. want them to they can't no she goes imagine walking through a room with a bunch of big buffed dudes that are after yeah. you and they're saying stuff now you, how do you feel I'm like oh I guess you're right. I feel like that with the DMs with these fucking I've, pigs. I've shared, remember when I shared that story about uh, Kyle? I, that's a, I mean, we joke about that story. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious. We joke about that story, but there's there's a lot of truth to that. Like, never in my life had had that ever clicked for me. Because I agree with you. I thought the same way, too. It's like, oh, they're complimenting. They mean no harm. But there is. There's a lot of truth to that. Like, if you're a, you know, 105-pound little girl and some, you know, group of three dudes that are 230, yeah, 240 yeah. or hollering at you, like... There is a very in, even if they even if they mean well and they're just flirting, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter there's like still a there, there's still sites. a threatening yeah. you know feeling that you get yeah, from dude. that and I just it, that never really fully connected until for me. Kyle Kingsbury yeah rubbed it, your back a little yeah bit. <laughs> I had that hey, hey Justin what and should I, I do feeling you know and Justin and I were there and I'm like we can't help you bro yeah, a, yeah. he'll hold us down too right. so you know <laughs> sit back I'll and get watch. the popcorn I guess so it, it gave me a, a whole different perspective on that and men are just and men are persistent and they don't. I remember reading this study where if, if a woman says something to a man that's nice, he's far more likely to think that she wants to hook up with him yeah. versus if a man says something nice to a woman. Mm -hmm. And they, they, the evolutionary, uh, I guess, explanation was that men assume more often because that'll give them more opportunities. They're yeah. going to be wrong a lot. Well, we're always looking for that. Yeah, and so they're going to be... so, But at least the odds are they're going to be right sometimes and then they'll get to mate or whatever. I had right. a buddy who worked with me. I'll never forget this guy. Uh, uh, he And I'm trying to think. I think... I don't know if Justin had him with as a counselor for a little bit. But anyways, he, uh, he would literally pick up on at least 10 girls a day. Like just... And I'd always Nick. tell him, like, you know, <laughs> I'm just Stop calling people out, bro. Hey, I didn't say his last name. Yeah, yeah. It was Michael. I so I won't tell you his oh, last name. Oh, that guy was aggressive. Dude. So he, and, but he was, I mean, sweet, nice guy, whatever that, but he was just like, I mean, he would literally walk over to one in the gym and I would see him like try and get a number and then not even five minutes later be walking on the other side of the gym trying to, <laughs> trying to get it. And his his whole logic and theory numbers. was like, numbers. yeah, it's a numbers game. game. Yeah, he says, you know, I've heard two out of ten will say go. will say yes, and so you know, I just you, I just every day we'll talk to like ten of them. Well, and eventually, it's, it's I mean, a valid strategy yeah. that works, but at the same time, it's like, do you really want to be that guy? <laughs> yeah, I yeah know. Like, look at you. <laughs> well, some, and guys the, don't, hey, some guys don't mind. No shame to your game. And dude. the tr and the truth is, it teaches. Uh, it, first off, uh, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. However. It does teach guys to to be okay with rejection. You have to learn that. Oh yeah. Well, isn't as that a young man, ultimate so proving you, you grounds, have to right? learn that because when you're at a dance in junior high or high school, it's in it's starting to change, but it's still it's still. The well, way isn't it that was. the theory on why why more men do sales? 
is because they they handle fast re- sales. Yeah, just fast, sales, especially they, fast they handle sales rejection process. better, yes. right? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that why? Isn't that why the the majority of, of salespeople are men? That's it's the theory. A very because, logical theory. Yeah, it's the theory because, like I said, you're the junior has you know junior high dance or high school dance. More men, guys are going to go and approach the girl to ask them for dance, and they're more likely to get a no. Right? Girls typically don't approach guys, not nearly as much, and if they do and they get a no. It tends to be a little bit more devastating because they're not as used to it, I guess. Whereas yeah. guys are just like, oh. Well, and two, the approach is different. It feels a lot more like friendship. You know, I don't know if this is my own experience, but I've been approached sometimes. And, and it, like, I, I, it was mixed signals. I didn't know that they were like trying to, uh, you know, get further along. It just felt more like, I'm, let's hang out, you know, like kind of. You like get, are you talking about vibe. you getting trapped in the friend zone? No, I'm talking about like uh-huh. when a girl actually wanted to go on a date. Oh, oh, oh. But they're, the the way that they asked was like very like not uh, as direct not as a guy direct would be. yes oh, yeah. yeah well it's just so like just the flirting like, like oh. i was saying i was like sal's not getting 10 to zero it's just the the women aren't like as aggressive as the guys are it's yeah. like different type of flirting they're smarter yeah about it they play, the, guys, play like, the long game yeah. the guys i'll just throw it out there whatever yeah. Yeah. see what I, oh you didn't respond this time i'll try again the next girls week. are like let me crack the door open and see if he steps in type yeah, of deal well, yeah i don't give off that vibe i'm a happily married man but the guys don't give a shit that's nah. all I'm going to say. Hey, well, it's, speaking of it's happily true. married, <clears throat> I want to start this story with that just in case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I used to be. Earmuffs, Katrina. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm like, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to like, uh, I, I just want to make sure that I don't get, I don't get roasted for this one later on because we were just talking about, um, what was it we were talking about? Toys, the, toys the, and the kids. Oh, that's yeah. right. So on the yeah. podcast, we were talking about that. And I always try and tell Katrina before it airs so she doesn't feel like she gets blindsided by a story like that. So we're talking about the tantrum thing. And and the toys and and she's talking about how like oh he's fine it's just we just had Christmas and we had family we didn't see and so I totally lost that argument and I'm like okay I'll yeah this was when we were we were talking about how you thought he just had too many toys and yeah yeah and just, the just getting gifts like it seems like every single day and yeah. I, I tried to like approach that and say you know hey could we try and you know limit that or maybe we get rid of some stuff yeah, and yeah, yeah. so I completely lost that argument. And I lost it to the, you know, the one that I, I don't know if you guys have dealt with before, but the, well, I'm with him all day long and this is what he ends up doing. And it's not so I'm like, okay, I, yeah. I surrender. She pulled the I'm in charge. Yeah. 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 So, which, hey, which they win with. Yeah. We weren't even there. Nine so, out of 10 times. Yeah. So then I, then I make this comment about like, well, maybe, um, maybe I haven't seen this tantrum thing because my relationship's going to be different from oh, than yours that which also not, was not yeah a that's good, not a good thing to say. yeah it was not a good direction to go either right so i'm like i'm drowning <laughs> maybe this, i'm just better yeah, than these you. are thoughts we keep in here yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i'm drowning in this conversation for sure right so anyways uh the reason why i'm bringing it up was i saw his first kind of like tantrum like i haven't seen this yet and it was, i mean i'm i'm just getting i up. can't imagine your son throwing he's the sweetest yeah. kid ever i cannot oh, imagine super happy kid. oh yeah but he's so he's go, he's going through this phase right now where he's he's learning um what he wants and what he doesn't want yeah and he's starting even though he's not fully there where he can communicate with us mm. but he's he's starting to understand like what no no i don't want to do this or i'm gonna yeah, or yeah. if you can't so anyway so um i wake up to hearing it and I, he's down he's downstairs at the bottom of the stairs and I, you know, I kind of hear it for a minute, and like it's it's not getting better; it's getting worse. Now is he I, screaming, or is he just crying? Oh, uh, he's he's crying. I mean, he's crying good enough to where when I went out, went and saw him, he had like a, a snot covered tear face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he's definitely not like him. Like I don't hear him like get like this. Like, yeah. He's such a quiet kid that he doesn't get super loud crying like this. And this is the loudest I've heard him. I've heard him get. So and I, and I'm Maximus. You know, I'm, I'm standing, standing at the top of stairs, and, and I look down, and he is just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. uncontrollably crying, and he's holding his pillow downstairs. And I go walking down, and I go, "What's what is going on? What Katrina? What is going on?" And she's like doing her thing, like she's just letting him, letting yeah. him cry at the bottom of stairs. And she's like, "He's pissed off that I took his pillow off his bed." I'm like, "Well, wh- why did you take it off his bed?" She's like, "Well." Hun, we're leaving today to go to Truckee. I I want his pillow for his bed there, and he's gonna want the pillow, yeah. but he doesn't understand why I'm taking it off the bed. And so I'm like trying to explain to her. I'm like, well, just why, why, like just leave it. I'll bring it or grab it or we'll hide sneak it, it or, or sneak it on and stuff yeah. like that. But no, she's just like she took it down there and brought it down and like okay, he's gonna throw a tantrum, let him do his thing. And so I come down there and I and I look at him and I go, hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like holding on to his pillow. <laughs> Yeah. It's you know sucking up all the snot bubbles <laughs> like and stuff pillow. like that. 
<laughs> and so I said, just let it. I said, I'll, I'll put it in the suitcase or I'll, I'll bring it down later like that. And he was so funny, dude. He, you know, carried his pillow all the way back up the stairs and wanted to put it back on his bed. And then he was fine. He was totally okay about it. But the, <clears throat> the part that I was like, and I couldn't win this, this, this conversation and I won't probably win it here again. Is so, that, so you took his side over hers. Basically? Yeah. It's like, well, so Justin and I had this conversation. I don't want to completely roll him under the bus either. Oh, go. He's going to include <laughs> you in this. I am. I'm, gonna, okay, so I'm, 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 I'm going down. He's going down with me. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> We're a team here. You guys We're a team. Don't include but, me. Okay. But, you know, I'm so he's team. obviously his boys are older, so he's experienced some of this stuff uh, already. And, you know, I, I was talking to him about how Katrina has told me that, you know, Max is going through this phase now where he's starting to, you know, defy her every once mm -hmm. in a while or throw a tantrum and it's kind of out of character. It's rare, but it's she's seen it. I hadn't seen it yet. And I was telling him, I, I'm wondering when I, we get back. This is when we were over in Florida. I said, I wonder when we get back if if I'm going to see like this new side of him that I haven't seen. He's like, nah, bro, I, don't, I think you're going to it'll probably be like how it is for me. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, well. I like he's like Everett is literally like me and so he just has to be handled different and he's not consistent he goes Ethan's like you can be very consistent with the way you discipline him and if he's acting out and yeah, he's it's like easy to read. yeah he's easy to read and handle he goes but he goes Everett is you know one one day he'll be acting out a certain way and if you discipline him that uh, this that way and he's fine and then the next day you discipline him the same for the same type of thing and then he freaks out mm. and he goes you know I bet you you and your son are going to be like that and th so again this was like the first situation and I just think I would have just handled that differently I'm like just leave the pillow it's like and then, but her argument is like, I, he can't get his way all the time because if I let, if I give him all this sure. leeway, then he's gonna take take advantage of me later on. Well, the day. she took a stand at that point. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So at that point, she is like, it's just like, okay, you're in, you've committed Pull, to pulled it. Pulled the card, yeah. Yeah, but so now I'm really interested to see like if this is gonna be this kind of like similar situation that Justin was talking about is like because I understand him or I I see myself in him, and I'm just like, hey, just leave me alone with the pillow. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. We could yeah. take a stand somewhere else. I'm like, wait a second, we're I'm more concerned that he's going to have this spoiled attitude because he gets everything he wants right now and has all these toys. You're worried about a pillow? Like I'm like I'm, I'm like we're on different yeah, planets yeah. right now on the things that we're concerned about. I'm like let him let him have his damn pillow. Well, it's, it's different. Moms <laughs> yeah. and dads and then the experiences and totally. it's, you know what it is sometimes and I've done this before where you take a stand and then you're going through it and you realize if I could go back in time I wouldn't have taken that stand. But now that I did I got to stick to my Yeah, guys, I imagine you know? that's probably, probably where she was at in yeah. it. Yeah. I think she probably realized. Um, she like, probably got upset or frustrated, right. took a stand, and now you got to follow through. Yeah, because you know? in her defense, okay, because I again, like, you know, Katrina's superwoman. She's handling everything. She's not. She's getting him ready in the morning. She's packing up for them to take off. She's doing his breakfast, like, yeah. you know, and so she's carrying this, doing that, and then, like, she's getting push back on gravity's yeah, pillow yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's just probably not in the mood to like and dad comes down and yeah. is, is merciful yeah the, yeah the dad comes <laughs> down like go Kate. ahead son go put your pillow back uh, in your bed yeah. oh i see yeah, tough, yeah. i see she was hard on you son i, I will allow it yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, Dad's probably, the best. I'm probably not getting sex for two weeks now no, <laughs> man. hey so aurelius he gets mad and he's bro it is i have to turn my head and laugh because i don't want him to think it's funny right right when he does this shit but he'll get mad, he'll get up, and he'll walk and knock shit around. Like, he'll walk over something, knock it off a, a shelf, grab something and throw it. And just, I'm like, what's he doing? And Jessica's like, <laughs> he's, wrecking shop. he's showing us he's mad. And he just, he just <laughs> walks around and does that, dude. Like, what the hell's he doing? You know, he's like throwing it, he's like, <sighs> just throwing shit. Or he'll sit, he was sitting at, at his, his little, uh, you know, high chair or whatever, eating. And then he'll like, he's like, he's done. So he'll say, I'm done, I'm done, right? But we're still eating. So we're like, okay, honey, we'll, we'll be there in a second. I'm done. He gives you five seconds. After five seconds, throwing this off the table, throwing out, take my water. And then you'll go to catch the water. He'll switch to the other hand, throw it behind him. He's like, no, it's everything's going on the floor. And he looks right at you while he's doing it. He just looks at you and just throws it and throws it. I'm like, and then I try not to laugh, right? I turn my head. <laughs> like, yeah, Katrina said Max was doing this thing. That I haven't seen this yet either. Like where they were getting ready to go to school and, you know, so she's on a, a time schedule and he, you know, went over and was wanting to go outside. And she says, no, 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 we're not going outside now. We're going to get ready for school. And she turned around and he like slid the slider open. And then she's like, no, no, no. We have to go. And then he stepped outside and then looked back. And she said he would like take one step. 
you know, and then like look testing. back at her. Yeah, just you could see that he's like testing what he can get get away with with her right now. And I'm like, oh wow, I just I, he hasn't messed with me like that. Yeah, yeah. so um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. When no, he Aurelius doing that. will get mad and he'll like squeeze your face and he'll make this this look on his face like, and he's got these little little nut little strong little nubby fingers. I'll just dig in, and then he'll do it, and then he'll see that he like he'll squeeze it, and then he'll kiss you. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, and then he'll do it again, and then oh. Like man, this is a this is an abusive relationship. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you hurt you hurt me, oh, then you love me right afterwards. Yeah, I, I had to get ever a uh, punching bag. You know that was like the best thing ever because he just like he, sometimes he'll have that where he just doesn't know how to like mm -hmm. get rid of all this like anger Dude. and like he's ah, I'm like put it here. Yeah, you know, and then he'll just like hammer at it. And he actually <laughs> what does he call him? Um, uh, Jimmy. So it's like his little like um, his little punching bag. He's just named him Jimmy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jimmy have it. He's just, <laughs> oh oh my Jimmy's God. like some. Kid I'm at like school, just yeah. let him just let him get it out, honey. Just Dude, let him get it out. It's it's yeah. hilarious. And I you know okay. Truth be told, I don't deal with this nearly as much as Jessica. Right? She's at home with. That's why we time. lose this, these arguments. We do. And I, <laughs> I hey, that, listen. That, she pulled that card on me. I'm hundred like, percent. Okay. Yeah, well, no. Like, hey, that's a point. This if she came in and tell yeah. me about about what I do, right? I would say the same thing. I get it. And but you know. So that also means when I see it once or twice, I'm not as frustrated because I didn't see it 15 times all day long. Right, right. So it's hard for me. The challenge is because this just makes it worse is to not laugh because I see this little, you know, one, not even one and a half year old. Bro, I totally feel you. He I terrorizes would, my wife. Yeah. She'll change it. Dude, she was changing his diaper the other day and he would not sit still. And <laughs> she, she's on the floor with him and he's kicking his he's legs. getting all messy. Everywhere. Dude, yeah. dude, he, <laughs> she got, oh, she, he grabbed a remote control, tried back. to throw it. And then he kicked the diaper a little bit and a little poo marble <laughs> fell out onto the cart, onto yeah, the rug. Dude. And she just like, bah! she got so, and I'm like, Try I like held it in. I was like, dude, I want to laugh so hard right now. <laughs> That'll make the song go bad. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, it's so, it's so, it's so funny. Yeah, no, you're yeah. so right. That has so, that has something to do with it too. Because I mean, I see the tantrum for the first time, and there's a part of me that thinks it's comical. Yeah. I'm like, oh my it's god, a, you know what? Because it is? I'm like, it's cute. I'm like, oh my god, look, yeah. it's, it's his new sheets and his new pillow that he just got. Yeah. His, his Mario. Little, his it's Mar a little human. They're getting super angry, yeah, and it's yeah. just it's funny over something ridiculous, right? Yeah. So I'm just like, let him, and just watching him like sniffle and cry and bring drag his pillow back to the oh. room like are we happy now it's back on the bed bro oh, yeah. like yeah all well, the world is back you know in what, peace you know what works on Aurelius is if he's really pissed off if I start m trying to make him laugh so I'll like tickle him and he'll mm -hmm. get really mad mm -hmm. but if I get him then he'll start giggling or if I throw him in the air when he's pissed oh, he gets dude. a little more mad but then he starts to laugh yeah. that used to not work on my daughter at all if I did oh, anything that's the go to diffuser dude. no make my, my kids laugh it made my daughter worse when yeah. she was little I, oh, really? I learned real quick just leave her alone <laughs> but he's funny the, the little one I just I'll play with him you know while he's angry and he's ah and I'll kiss him and hold him and tickle him and then eventually I'll win it over right. but yeah it's a good time but yeah I couldn't imagine dealing with that all day long because especially when they get old enough to like run around and cause a little damage and throw shit. Oh, yeah. And it's a compilation of a bunch of these interactions, right? And it, like, usually, like, boils up to that point, and you end up seeing where it got boiled up, like, as you walk in, and Dude, I'm like, oh, what is this? When I was, when I was younger, you know, and I, you know, sorry, Mom, but this, you know, this is true. She, okay, so my mom had four kids, and we were, I, I was three years older than my sister, but then it went, like, two years or less between each one. So four kids, she, you know, didn't have a nanny or anything like that. We'd go to my grandma's house sometimes, but ultimately, my mom did. She grocery shopped with us, went to the post office with us, like had to clean the house with us, like all this stuff. And we were, you know, crazy kids. My brother and my sister were maniacs. But, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't real, I didn't understand this. So every once in a while, my mom would lose her shit. And I remember one time I told her, I remember how old I was, I was 10, maybe 11, or maybe younger. And she just got, the, she got super mad. She grabbed this magazine, she threw it, and she's like, ah. And I remember I looked at her and said, mom. You need to calm down. Yeah. Like, what is going on here? And she looked at me like, "You see, one more word, boy." You. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you become, you become a parent. I'm like, "Oh, that's why." Yeah. Oh, I understand it now. I totally get why yeah. she lost her shit. You know, yeah. she probably cleaned the same area 15 times in a row and just finally lost. Yeah, it. I'm not. I'm yeah. not looking forward to the the public time. Right. That to like to, like me. I have a lot of patience. I think when it's in our house, mm -hmm. like I think I would be, just be like, yeah, let them figure it out. You know, let them sit there and throw his tantrum or you know be frustrated from it we'll yeah. work it all out and then we'll talk about it. but i can't imagine if he were to do that and i know that's coming right everybody yeah. says that that day comes right where they're you're in the grocery store or in somewhere in public and they just 
decide they're going to the, be a shit. What you're supposed to do. That's the worst. And and actually doing it is is really hard. So what you're supposed to do is you let them lose their shit and you don't give them any any uh, attention and you walk away. You know, with an eyesight. Obviously, you don't want to leave your kid alone in a store, but you let them lose their shit and whatever. That sounds great in theory, right? Well, yeah, but that's why I say kids, at home. That's really that's exactly how I would oh, do it. Let but them, when they're let, screaming in the grocery store, yeah. and then they realize mm, that if they mm, go mm, mm. and they knock the cereal boxes off the aisle or <laughs> no, open a bag no, of something no. and spread it everywhere, then you start to then you're like, okay, this isn't working. All anymore. these you're gonna pay for. Yeah, no, my home. mom actually let my, my brother did that. He was losing his shit, and so my mom said, "I'm gonna leave you in the store," and and he kept doing it. So she went. She parked in front of the store so that that she could see in the store. So she went in the car, so he thought she left. He didn't know. And she was watching him lose his shit. Well, anyway, fucking the manager comes, you know, finds my mom. Um, ma'am, you can't leave your son. And you know, she's like, I'm not leaving him. I just saw it. I try to get him to realize. Wait until the storm calms down. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to make him realize. Anyway, it's it's all it's all it's all fun. Yeah, it's all good time. Yeah, yeah. So I was reading a cool article about the market that Viore is now starting to crush in. Do you guys know that that market, that activewear market, is poised to grow twenty five percent over the next like four years? Wow, twenty five percent. That is massive, massive wow, yeah. growth. Uh, the article I was reading about Viore was talking about how they Viore as a company totally came in and disrupted uh, that market, really disrupted it. And they were showing how they came in. I wonder how much of the market share they have in comparison to like to Lulu, because obviously Lulu is one of the first, right? And then they, they I know they've been. They've been chasing them. Well, mm -hmm. when did Viore kick off? Like 2012, 2011? It wasn't that long ago. That's a good question. It was like nine years ago, maybe? We got them when they were pretty damn new. Yeah, and then they now they're almost, I think, close. they're getting close to 1,000 employees, hmm. maybe? Really? Something like that. Yeah, so it's they've exploded. Which is a ton, considering they're, they're mainly a direct-to-consumer brand. Yeah, and so what the article was saying was that, you know, because Viore at first focused on men, mm -hmm. and they crushed it with that, and then women were buying some of the men's stuff for themselves because they liked it so much, and that's what gave them... Yeah. Like the impetus to say, all right, let's go after the female market. In which case, now they're also exploding. You know, I always think about too, because I I experienced this when I moved to Chicago and I was um, out there and I felt like I was on this weird island of fashion uh, because it was like there's like coastal kind of surf influence and all that kind of stuff, um, which didn't really make its way into the Midwest. But uh, I've seen that sort of change and seen um, more people wearing you know, athleisure wear and yeah. all that, like within like the heartland and all that. I wonder if that's like an expanded market through there too. I, I bet it, I bet it is because yeah. it doesn't look like it used to. It I looks, would think what we just went through too, like everybody now moving to Zoom and working home part-time too, probably accelerated that, the growth also. So did right? you know it's that- It's comfort, but it's also yeah, stylish. Which yeah. is so the, the athleisure wear market actually took a hit during uh, the pandemic. Really? But Viore crushed- so uh, uh, Viore crushed, but the overall market dropped down. Really? The yeah. overall market dropped? Huh? Yeah, well, I guess maybe people aren't, you know, the whole market, right? Is Because there's obviously a lot of people that aren't just wearing it for work. They're wearing it for going out yeah. and playing sports yep. and doing, you know, social active things. So that's interesting. Yeah. So wow. the market went down, but Viore crushed, which is like, I mean, that's, <clears throat> if you're crushing in a down yeah. market, in your space. Are you watching? I, I have not been checking in with the market at all lately. Yeah, Are you no, watching not, it right yeah, now? Yeah, it's not good. Uh, yeah, that's probably <laughs> so, why uh, everything's going down. Yeah. yeah. You been know that's what's happening it. when we're not talking about it on the show anymore? <laughs> yeah. That's our fault. Well, everything was like hitting, you know, for, for so long. So yeah. it's like inevitable. Yeah. It's, no, it's it's not doing so good right now. It's looking very interesting. Um, you know, inflation numbers keep getting higher and higher. Uh, and so it's, in, I read this interesting, uh, statistic. I want to double check it, but did you guys know that more people, more citizens, I couldn't believe this, more citizens own crypto than have a savings account. You said that yesterday. That can't be possible. What? Doug, maybe you can double check that, but I, it was 20, it was like 25 to 24%. First of all, I didn't know that so few people have yeah, a I savings say, I account. I don't know what I'm more shocked about there is that there's that many people that have crypto now or there's that few of people that have savings accounts. Well, like, okay, so did they move? Did they originally have a savings account and then just be like, ah, this isn't going to uh, benefit me anymore, so I'm moving to crypto? Well, so I'm going to guess, but I would love for Doug to confirm this, but I'm going to guess that it's because a lot of young people who wouldn't get a savings account are buying crypto, right? Uh -huh. So you're getting a lot of these... Teenagers, Americans, college kids. More Americans owned crypto than savings accounts for the first time. What are those? Uh, what are that? Those stats say right there, Doug. 
That's crazy. <clears throat> yeah. So a new study found that one in four Americans own crypto marginally higher than the number of Americans with savings accounts for the first time ever. Wow. So, uh, see, I think it has a lot to do with kids. Uh, millennials were the biggest crypto fans. Well, yeah. With younger, higher earning males dominating the ownership charts. Wow. Well, it's also too because, I mean. Yeah, uh, 24 to 23%. Savings accounts, just what? Uh, two decades ago, you could actually make a couple percent on a savings account where yeah. now it's like a, a fraction of interest. a percent. Well, no, here's another nothing. statistic that goes along with this. Did you guys know that uh, 39 or 40 percent of Americans don't have a thousand dollars in their savings account? So almost 40 percent, almost, almost 40 percent could not survive a thousand dollar emergency. Just to show you how many, what percentage of people are living literally paycheck to paycheck, yeah. earning and spending, earning and spending. I think we see. I think that, that that's more me. common than not, especially over here in the Bay. Like, I think it's just it's so hard. Oh, the cost to, of living, it, yeah, how yeah. The cost of living it? is so so high, and everybody's so leveraged, you know, to be able to afford the lifestyle. Yeah, dual incomes is the only way to survive here. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to break through and then start really like yeah, saving. but but I, there's a there's a there's a, a huge chasm between people like that and then people who have tons of money. That's oh, why yeah. it's that's why it's, it's so expensive. Even, it's gotten even wider. Yeah, if you if you live in the Bay Area, either a you have you cash out stock or whatever, you got a lot of money, or you earn a lot of money, you and your wife or whatever, or you're like struggling to be able to pay rent on your tiny apartment. It's like it's like either or. I don't mm -hmm. know too many people in the middle. Mm -mm. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, having to I, it's just again, it's super super high cost of living, low supply of property. Yeah, Lots yeah. of people who have these these look at that. Oh, 56 percent of Americans are unable to cover a one thousand dollar emergency expense. Wow. That's, a, that's that's crazy. That's dude. a high amount. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, one of the challenges with eating a healthy whole food diet uh, can be digestive issues. You bumped up your fiber, you increased your protein, but now you find your body's trying to adjust and your digestion doesn't seem to be quite right. Well, one thing that can help are digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes help your body break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to get them to the target tissues, muscles in particular. Now, don't just go with any digestive enzymes from any company. Go with ones that are designed for people like you, people who are into fitness. Try out Masszymes. That's the company we work with. I love them. It's made a huge difference with my digestion. Head over to, uh, to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Bio Optimizers. They have a Masszymes product in there, and it's great, again, for what we just talked about. By the way, the code for a discount, uh, I believe it's 10% off, is MINDPUMP10. So MINDPUMP10, when you go to mindpumppartners.com, click on Bio Optimizers. That's the discount code for 10% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Heidi Lynn Swisher. How do you do drop sets properly? Ah, good old drop sets, otherwise known as strip sets. This is where you do as many reps as you can with a particular weight. Then it's called a drop set because you would put the weight down or drop it, grab a lighter pair of dumbbells or lighter weight, and then right. squeeze out more reps. Down. And then you go down and, and you can do this, you know, two or three, four times. Some people do it more than that. Well, they'll, they'll do down the ladder or they'll go all the way down the dumbbell rack. Um, I mean, the proper way to do a, a, a drop set, first of all, form is absolutely crucial yeah. with any set, but especially with drop sets because drop sets are intensity based. Uh, like I explained, you know, if you're doing as many reps as you can with, let's say, 30 pound dumbbells, and then you, you know, you get to the 10th rep and you know you can't perform an 11th rep, then you put them down and you get the 20 pound dumbbells, you'll get another three or four reps out. And so form is very, very important. And the one tip I have for drop sets is to drop the weight a little more than you think when you yeah. when you go from one weight to the other. I, I The mistake I would usually make as a kid would be I'd go down five pounds, mm -hmm. which only gets you like a rep. Yeah. So I figured, you know, a, a bigger drop allowed me to squeeze out more reps. Um, it's an intensity technique. It's great for an incredible pump. It's not something I would do on a consistent basis, though. And I would save this for more for advanced uh, lifters. Yeah, right? I'd save it for advanced or I'd save it for a hypertrophy phase of your programming, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. like a phase three in a lot of our programs, um, I wouldn't be doing it in a strength phase. And I do think that that's the most common mistake when you see somebody doing a drop set is they, they drop down to a weight they can still do, but then their form kind of goes out the window. Yeah. So it's like kind of defeating the purpose, uh, if you're especially if you're trying to target a specific muscle or get a pump in a specific muscle to not drop it enough weight that you can still concentrate on that muscle. So I agree. I think that's the the one rule I would say. As far as 
the time and uh, like uh, the actual percentage of the load. Like I think that's just going to depend on the person. And yeah. I don't think it's that uh, we're splitting hairs a difference. If it's a 15 second or a 30 second difference between getting it, it's you're going to, yeah. if you do three or four or five drop sets in a row, like you're going to get a pump. You oh, know? Yeah. I can't imagine doing this a bunch of times. <laughs> like it's no. definitely something you just do occasionally for fun more than anything. I mean, we used to do, it just kind of reminds me of some of these old techniques, like even the 21s and all these, oh, yeah. you know, fun type of like hypertrophy um, type of uh, techniques and exercises to throw in. But it's it can get sloppy and get away from you really quick. That's exactly what happened. Conscious as, of it. as a kid, I abused it. I did it all the time. Um, I was constant. If I do it now, it'll look like this where um, – I'm kind of rushed in my workout and I don't have a lot of time and like I So less volume, more intensity. Yeah, or yeah. like I realize like like let's say I'm I'm you know finishing up and it's um on on one of my last exercises I'm doing, you know, bench or something and I look up at the clock and I go, "Oh shit, I got to get out of here in 10 minutes or whatever like that." But I wanted to get, you know, a, a good lift on my bench and I just don't have the time to do five straight sets with rest periods like you know what I'll do is I'll do a drop set real quick on this and just at least get a really nice pump yeah. from it. So that's kind of how I would like insert it into my workout yeah. now. If I have the time, I'm doing a more traditional type of lift. Uh, if I was rushed for some reason, like that might be like a quick way. Yeah, to the, the benefit is you get the, the higher intensity. It's good for hypertrophy, good for the mm -hmm. pump. You can overdo it very easily. Form is where people always screw up because the idea is to get more reps. And so you tend to see people do this and then their form starts to get sloppy. I uh, I probably do drop sets, mm, I would say twice a month, maybe at most. I almost never do drop sets with a barbell. Almost never. And, and it's yeah. mainly because barbell exercises, if I'm doing a bench press or a squat or a deadlift or overhead press, I'm not working out with other people. So it, right. that would I would have to load it with a bunch of tens, I guess, and throw one off and throw one off and get underneath it again. I like a drop set to have really minimal rest. Dumbbells are better. I, I get my that's three the, pairs of dumbbells and I go one, two, three. Right? That's the only instance, like I would say, you pretty much need a, a workout partner. Yes, you know, if you have a barbell and you're doing like a bench press where you're like stripping the weight off. But other than that, yeah, I I, I probably wouldn't totally. Do it. And they also lend themselves a little better to single joint exercises than they do to compound lifts. I would not do a drop set for an exercise where. Like, for example, with a deadlift, the difference between a safe deadlift and a bad deadlift or a dangerous deadlift is small, right? If your form is good, safe. If it's off a little bit, it can become pretty dangerous or, or risky, I should say. Unlike single joint exercises, where if I'm doing a curl, I'm off a little bit, it's, it's probably still safe. So I don't like to do drop sets with complex compound lifts. I like to do them typically with isolation, you know, single joint exercises. My favorites are like laterals. <clears throat> Laterals are great for a drop set. Mm. Curls are great for a drop set. Uh, cable exercises tend yeah. to be okay. Tricep push downs. Tricep press downs are good yeah. for a drop set. Um, you know, any isolation exercise in general will tend to be good with a drop set, but not heavy complex. I, I agree. Although I, the last time I did it, I actually just did it on a, a bench press. I did it on barbell. But I think something that's important too is that. So when I'm doing a drop set, I'm not so hung up on what I what I want to do rep wise, right? So if you're following like a you know you're t training ten to twelve reps, I'm not trying to do a drop set and also stay within my ten to twelve reps. I'm gonna take it to where I the muscle fatigues and yes. I can't and I can't do another perfect you can't rep. Perform it well. So that's yeah. what it looks like. So I might get under like the bench and let's say I, I, I do a set of two twenty five and then I drop down to say like one fifty one sixty yeah. range or whatever. And, you know, maybe I get seven out and I can already feel my form wanting to go off. Like, that's it. I rack it. Yep. Like, then I, go, then I go drop again. Now I drop down to 90 pounds. Again, I'm, I'm pressing it out. Maybe I get six of those before my form starts to go. And then I rack yeah. again. I'm not, even though I could have potentially got 10 reps, you know, but I'm going to roll my shoulder and arch my back and cheat it, cheat it up just to get it up. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I'm shutting it down before that. And yeah. so that's how I would do it. With I a, also usually don't drop down more than twice. So I have done the run the rack drop sets where mm -hmm. you're like, you're literally starting at one end of the rack and you're stepping down. We have that down. in mass PED, I believe. There is, there's yeah. a run the rack yeah. in there. Oh yeah. But that's a, way too much for most people. Yeah. I do, I'll go, you know, from one lift, excuse me, from one weight to another weight to another weight and that's it. Yeah. It's usually three and then I'm done. Mm -hmm. I don't go uh, any more than that. But yeah, the, the pumps can be intense. It's really cool. Totally can be easily abused. And like I said, I still, I even now today and I'm training really hard and consistent, Twice a month is that the, the most that I would, you know, do them. Next question is from Party Boo Hat. 
What's the difference and or benefits between doing side raises with straight arms versus bent elbows? Oh, good question. Yeah. So, okay, uh, the action, so we're doing laterals, right? Or side lifts for the shoulders. The action of the delt is the same whether my arm is bent or straight because the action of the deltoid is to lift up the, the humerus, which is the upper part of my arm. So then why would I keep my elbows bent versus straight? Well, mm. really straight arm lengthens the lever. So yeah, whatever, lever weight, yeah, whatever weight you're using is going to be much heavier. The problem is when you start to really straighten the arm out, some people start to feel tension in the top of the elbow. And it just doesn't mm. feel as comfortable as good. And it also tends to, if you know, and I've seen people do laterals like this, it tends to encourage this external rotation at the hand, whereas a bent elbow allows the hand to fall a little bit and helps counter that tendency to want to turn it into this kind of like upright, you know, row or this upper back uh, type exercise. Now, do you guys ever play with how bent or not bent your elbow is? Like, do you have some times where you'll go heavier and bend the elbow and then other times you'll go, yeah, go lighter, with really light and strict? Arm. Like, yeah, is there- Not so much anymore. I used to, but now it's almost always with a slight bend my elbows. Do you guys, how about you? Yeah, I'll, I'll play with it. And that's exactly how I'll decide on how, if, it, if it's a day where it's like, I'm just really either touching the laterals or I'm going to- just I'm going real light or just kind of chasing a pump and I'm not lifting heavy. I'm going to go straight yeah. arm, slow, controlled, and all I'm doing is really trying to pump blood into that muscle. Now, if it's a day where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go a little heavier on my laterals, even though I don't recommend going really heavy on laterals because how many people incorporate their traps when they do that? Mm -hmm. um, I will. I'll occasionally go heavy on them or heavy in comparison to the straight arm. Um, and that's the time where I'm going to bend my elbows a little bit yeah. in order to do it. I think mainly it's to protect uh, some of those supporting muscles. Like, for example, like a fly. Yeah. A fly, you keep your arm slightly bent too. Now, if I straighten my arm out, the pec is doing the same thing in a fly too, but the tension at the bicep it's gets kind of gnarly. Too much tension in the ligaments. Yeah. yeah, and so when you have a straight arm lateral, I, you know, and I've done this with, I've seen clients come to me and tell me their elbow hurts when doing laterals, and I watch them do it and say, oh, you're, bend your elbow a little bit, and then they'll have less less pain. So I think that's really the main reason why you almost always tend to see it with the bent elbow. I wish you, we could like yeah. break down like, um, cause here's the thing as, as you go from, you know, almost completely straight to here, to here, to here, to here, as you go in, you know, uh, this, like, so let's say, uh, this is, um, 15 pound laterals are, are hard, difficult, completely yeah. straight. Um, 15 pounds completely straight is like doing 25 pounds yeah. here or yeah. doing 40 pounds yep. here. You know yep. what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of people are fooled into thinking that, oh, you know, I can, I'm doing super heavy laterals, but it's like, well, you could also cut the weight in half and, That's a good point. and go completely straight and get just as good of a lift on your, on your delts as you're yeah. on, on your laterals as you can with the, the heavier yeah, weight. Yeah, there's something about, I think, uh, locked out joints. Like I'm, I'm a little cautious to, you know, train that way very often. Like I always keep a bit of a soft knee or a bit of a soft elbow and yeah. most uh, things just to keep that kind of cushion and um, allow for the force to distribute a little more effectively. Uh, but so even when I'm locked out or like I'm a straight arm in it, it's not completely straight. I, I agree. I'm the, I'm the same way too. Like uh, when I say straight arm, you just mean straighter. Yes, yeah, straighter. Yeah, yeah, it's like almost all the longer. way out, but there's always like a five yeah. to 10 degree bend. But I, but I do see, I used to see this with clients that if their arms are too straight, it was really easy for them to do this, to rotate, externally rotate, right? Yeah, I've seen that. When the elbow's a little bent, because now the resistance is in front of the, of the arm, it puts them in a more... I guess, advantageous position for what we're trying to target, I should say, right? Well, now, can you explain that to you? Because, um, you know, somebody that's not as much of a, a bodybuilder, or like isolated focus guy, like I know that there was like uh, emphasis on like kind of turning the thumbs down at the top. Was that Yeah, so technique? this this right here, this this rotating of the wrist has nothing to do with the shoulder. This is, this the the, the shoulder does not super. what this down. does is it turns the elbow. Yes. So if you so look that, at the, that cue of pretend like you're, and I think it's an old Arnold Q. I want to, yeah, it is. Is, where you yeah. pretend like you're dumping out milk or whatever like that. Yeah. All that is doing is it's keeping the yeah. elbow from doing what he was saying. Yeah, because if you look at the where the side deltoid connects at the at the humerus, it's here. So this will be direct uh, resistance when my hand is when my arm is slightly rotated down. As I rotate up, now it's more front delt, right? In fact, an old school nobody does this anymore. But an old school front delt exercise was actually called a standing uh, fly. Where, oh, I used to do those. Remember those? Yes. Palms like facing up and you come down and come up. Like this is a, a front delt exercise and it's all about where the mm. delt attaches at the humerus. So when you externally rotate this way, 
you're going to get more front delt. And if you start to go heavy, then you start to shrug and squeeze the upper back and you start to get more traps, which if you're interested in power, if you're an athlete, that's probably better, right? Mm. Uh, because you want that that strong, what do they call it, a yoke, right? Up in your upper back. Yeah. But if you're sculpting and you're trying to hit the side delt or whatever, well, now it's all about connecting and feeling the, the target area, in which case it makes more sense. And I know there's people online that say things like, don't hold the dumbbell that way. It's bad for the shoulder. No, no, no. Listen, if you can do it with good stability and strength and control, it's fine. It's any exercise done without good stability starts to become dangerous. That one just requires a little bit more stability. That well, that's the cue that Justin brought. I actually really like that cue for especially teaching like beginners because it's it's harder to explain like internal external rotation yeah, to yeah, them yeah. or try to break down the position of their elbow. It's easier to give a cue like pretend like you're holding yeah. gallons of milk and you're pouring and, it and you're out, pouring it out as you get up. Like that just it's a one of those great I think trainer hack cues that is just it's not uh you know, it's not technical but it's a a great cue to get people to do what you want them to do totally next question is from rebecca Kara mardian what are the pros and cons of taking a couple of weeks off from the gym entirely once in a while well more pros I'm, and cons yeah if i'm talking well, to somebody who's super consistent it's different than if i'm talking to somebody who's not consistent so if you're super consistent the mm -hmm. pros are better recovery, you're going to get better results by doing this, less inflammation, less injury, a nice reset. The only con I can see for the super consistent person are you lose the mental effects that you can gain from exercise. I, I do this, right? I work out more for the mental effects than the physical. It's uh, like meditation for me. It makes me feel good. And so moving and doing that kind of stuff makes me feel good. Not going to the gym for two weeks you guys would see a change in my personality. Not only sure. that, but m most people, mm. I mean, I can, I can count on one hand how many times I program this for a client. Mm. Most people struggle with consistency. Most people take two weeks off. Anyway. That's right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Most people struggle with consistency that I don't need to program a week or two off in the, in the mm -hmm. year because yeah, it, it, happens it happens naturally, right? So I've re literally less than five clients have I ever had to say, hey, you know what? We should probably take a whole week off because you've been going consistent for the last year with no breaks. Like it's like that just it doesn't happen that often. So, but you're right. If I'm now, if you're a fitness nerd and you love training and you're borderline addicted to lifting and you rarely ever take a day off, there's tremendous value. There's tremendous mm -hmm. value in somebody taking a, a week off from that and maybe doing something like more recuperative, walking, stretching, you know, doing other stuff. Yep. Um, I think, and the, the, what that study blew my mind when that came out, yep. uh, that we talked about, um, what a couple months ago it's, mm -hmm. or a while ago when it talked about the, they had three months of consistent training and then they had a group that never missed any days for three months and then they had a group that every third week they took a whole week off mm -hmm. yeah. which sounds like a ton when you think about it over the course of three months like they're they're missing almost a month of training in there and they actually got the same results as the at client. the end there was no difference in yeah so i mean that just highlights how important the the week of rest and how beneficial yeah. it can be. Now, to, to the person off. who gets the mental benefits from activity, what you could do is go to the gym and go super easy right. and super light. So you'll get some of the mental benefits of moving and whatever. And this is how I would do it: is I would go two weeks, two weeks completely off for me would not be a mental would not be good. Well, yeah, and I, I definitely would stress that I wouldn't want stop the activity from mm -hmm. happening. It would just be a different form of it that was very much more recuperative, restorative, yeah. and, and low intensity. Uh, but to to make sure that you know you're. You're, you're keeping the body in that path of of healing and blood flow and all that. Like I think that's essential. Well, I, well and just keeping the habit up. Yeah, yeah. right. You've, you've, too, you, the you took a long yeah. You took a long time to probably build the discipline of training every morning at five o'clock in the morning. You know you need to take some time off mm -hmm. of hammering the weight. So I'm not going to stop getting up at five in the morning and going yeah. to the gym or doing thing. Instead, now I'm just going to walk, you know, or yeah. swim or do the sauna for an hour. It's like keep that habit that you've built of showing up to the location or whatever wherever you're lifting or exercising. Keep that consistent. Just modify it. Now, I, I, what we don't know is this could be a question from somebody who's got like a week vacation coming up, yeah. you know, where they're taking off for a week somewhere. And if that's the case, then I just, I well, wouldn't worry about it. No. And, and I tell you what, vacation. when I go on vacations, I'll usually do some workouts if there's a, like a gym, but the hotel gyms are usually crap. So I'm not training it anywhere near the intensity or volume or whatever. So it's, it's kind of like, it's not a week off, but it's kind of like deload or whatever. 
When I come back, I always have the best workouts. Mm -hmm. So I would say if all things being equal, if you compare two very consistent people and one person took two weeks off every six months and the other person took no weeks off, uh, physically speaking, the performance, muscle, and strength gains will be better with person that took the weeks off. Yeah, because uh, you, you, your body needs some of that, and it does resensitize your body to exercise. Next question is from Matthew Garcia: How long should I supplement with ashwagandha for? You know, it's, you know what's funny about ashwagandha? It is now becoming uh, what, because of the studies that they're doing on ashwagandha. It's becoming one of the most popular uh, health and wellness and athletic performance herbs. Hmm. that you'll find anywhere. There's no drawbacks of doing every day, right? Uh, well, drawbacks, uh, potentially. Could let's you say, downregulate and like not No, be no. So what I mean by that is um, you could have uh, an intolerance to nightshade, nightshade uh. vegetables, so you might have an issue. It also changes your body's relationship with cortisol. So oh, interesting. It, yeah, it could. One of the reasons, So, and in fact, it lowers cortisol, right? Because I guess your body becomes more efficient using cortisol. So that's why it's a good stress hormone, or excuse me, a stress supplement, or what they would call an adaptogen. But the challenge with stuff like that is it may mask uh, other stuff. So you may just allow yourself to keep, you know, messing your body up. Oh, more interesting. And more. Hmm. But that being said, uh, it improves recovery, strength. It gives people better sleep, raises testosterone in men. Uh, it's a remarkable herb and supplement. I personally do not see effects past 60, 60 days. After two months, I, I go off. It does nothing for me anymore. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and I, I, I noticed that with any you know, herb or, or supplement that so I So give take. me an example of somebody who you, <clears throat> you would for sure recommend, like, oh, that type of person should take this. And then what person would you say, like, would avoid, you would say avoid it? Yeah, so the person I would give it to, they already have a good diet, they're exercising well, good sleep, right? So everything, all the, all the big stuff is taken care of. And they want a little extra performance, they want better recovery, then I may recommend, hey, let's try ashwagandha. It, a lot of people seem to feel real good on it, um, so let, let's give that a shot. The person I wouldn't would be the person who we're dealing with um, you know, HPA axis dysfunction. Now, typically functional medicine practitioners will use ashwagandha to help people with HPA axis dysfunction, but because I'm not an expert in treating that, I wouldn't do it because what I'm afraid of doing is giving them something that makes them feel better but then doesn't address the root issues so like the and allows them to keep going on the bad, the wrong path. So like the cortisol junkie we talked about on the show yeah. the other day, you would avoid giving it to that client because it you would don't want just, them to mask. Something. Temporarily, they would feel better mm -hmm. and they would probably cause more damage. Might even right? start ramping it up. Totally, yeah. right? So, and I, you know, a functional medicine practitioner would look at all the other stuff first before, mm -hmm. you know, at, or all together. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's a great, I, I tell you, most people, if they take ashwagandha, Within a few weeks, we'll notice um, energy, libido, and athletic performance uh, enhancement. So really, it's just like you get adapted to it at some point, which then it probably loses a bit of its effectiveness uh, overall. Yeah, and I have yet to find any product no. that doesn't do that. Yeah, right. right. Well, yeah. so the the green juice uh, organifies. They have so what six hundred milligrams of it inside their yep. inside of it. Is that considered a reasonable dose? Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah, it's a good dose. Um, you could go higher if you're like you know super intense, lots of stress. The way I would use it, as I'd say, okay, I'm going to go through um, six weeks of really intense workouts, or I'm going to add extra volume because I'm trying to cut or something like that. Then I would throw it in. And it, it, it moves the overtraining line a little further. So now I can add more volume, more training, and I'm not so at risk. Because here's what I noticed with ashwagandha. I don't get as sore and as stiff, and I seem to be able to handle a lot more volume mm. when I'm taking it. Um, but again, it's, it's one of the few supplements you'll actually notice. Most people will notice a difference. Not as profound as creatine. And creatine is something you can take, you, you take all the time. It's not something you go off and on. You just take it all the time, and you, you continue to reap the health benefits from it. I wonder if that's one of the major things that people do report back about the green juice, why it makes them feel so good. I, I 100% think so. Oh, wow. 100% think so. I think the ashwagandha makes that big of a difference. So it's good stuff. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So right now, Justin and Adam are on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.